Hello everyone, Cindy Saddleman here once again with a brand new game show tier maker video. Now, I did this topic a few months ago. Um, one of my favorite Twitch streamers, your old dad, had a... Uh, he actually made a game show host tier maker. And we got some nice comments in the comment section, as you normally do. Um, a lot of you had some reservations about it, saying, Where's this host? Where's that host? Where's Jeff Edwards? Why did you put this guy so high? Why did you put this guy so low? Well, it's my tier maker, and those are the hosts that were there. So we're doing it again. Your old dad has come back. He has made a brand new game show host tier maker. He has added some hosts, and we've kind of changed up the names of the tiers. So, we are going to do over 40 hosts in this tier maker. And if you're ready to go, as Al Dubois would say, I'm bumper stumpers. Let's go. So, let's go to the tier maker. We have all of these hosts. We have Eubanks, Hall, Ben Bailey, Tamark, and Combs, Dawson. Rayburn, Perry, Sajak, uh, Merrick Vieira, Maim Bialik, Ken Jennings, and a bunch of people on there. Now, let's talk about the tiers. We have the GOAT tier, which is the highest tier. Then we have those great hosts who just don't quite reach GOAT status. And then we have your good hosts. And then we have hosts that I think that are, eh, they're alright, I guess. And then there's the Pat Bullard tier. Um, if you're a fan of Game Show Garbage, I think you know why I labeled it the Pat Bullard tier. Now, here are the rules. I gotta put at least one host in each tier. And for those of you who are looking at the faces below me, that shouldn't be too hard to figure, that shouldn't be too hard of a task. It's gotta be a rule for all of these tier maker videos you got to put something in every tier. At least in the original five. Um, there will be a video in the future where there will be a sixth tier where it says, never seen it. Anyway, so let's get going. We're going to tackle these in order. And I'm trying not going to take too much of your time. This might take about an hour because we've got a lot of hosts to talk about. Bob Eubanks is first up. And i got to say this about Bob Eubanks. He is a fantastic host. Um, he did some shows really well. He did Newlywed Game really well. I really liked him on Card Sharks. Um, there are some shows where I wish he didn't do. Um, there is, uh, Family Secrets, which was really awful. Um, but that was more production fault than Eubanks' fault. And then there was a show called Infatuation, which he produced, so it was his fault. And... If you want to know why we... I, I had some requests for Infatuation. I didn't cover it because that's not a game show. It's more of a talk show than it is a game show. Um, oddly enough, Infatuation got a short run in the UK. Hosted by Bob Eubanks, of all people. So, uh, and there's a, about a half episode or so of it up on YouTube. If you find that half uh, half uh, episode of, U of Infatuation UK on YouTube, it's something. It really is something. Is Bob a goat? I'm going to say yes. Bob's, Bob's goat tier. And the reason being is because I don't think Newlywed Game works without him. I Card Sharks and Asics could have worked without him, but we won't know for sure. I mean, for that version, Bill Rafferty. I'm trying to remember the storyline, or the way, like Bill was off. Bill Rafferty was offered the first shot and he turned it down. Then you had Bruce Forsyth. Patrick Wayne, they were offered, uh, was offered the position, and CBS rejected him. Uh, Patrick Wayne for not 
I, I don't know what happened with Patrick Wayne, but Forsyth, they probably didn't think he would connect with U.S. audiences. They would be proven right with Hot Streak, which that only lasted 13 weeks, but that was against tough competition. So, yeah, go to your Bob. Now, Monty Hall. He has done one show well, and he made it legendary, and that is Let's Make a Deal. He has also done other shows, which he was uh, he was really good on Video Village. He was also very good on It's Anybody's Guess. There was a couple of pilots that he did. Then he also did the 86 version of Split Second, which was okay. And I'm going to say Monty's a goat. There's no other way around it. He is a goat. Like, Let's Make a Deal doesn't work with... Wouldn't have worked without him before Wayne Brady came in. And then Wayne Brady came in with the new version, and he was essentially handpicked by Monty. And with the way Let's Make a Deal is right now, they tailored it more to Wayne's style and... It worked wonders. It was a fantastic... It currently is a fantastic show. Um, the way they've also... We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but yeah, Money's a Goat. Ben Bailey. Um, he did Cash Cab. I'm going to come out and say it. I don't like Cash Cab. Like, it always infuriated me. Like, the reason it won so many Emmys is because it was a Discovery Channel show. And back when Discovery Channel actually meant something. I know it still does mean something, but, you know, back when it really meant something. And then he did Who's Still Standing, which uh, videos still up here on the YouTube channel. The old game show garbage induction of that. So you can take, that, take a look at that where Ben Baylor was just meh. And to be honest, that's what I think about Ben Bailey. He's just meh. Um, then we have Peter Tamarkin, Pressure Luck, Hitman. We talked about him before on the original one. He's not a GOAT. Um, and the reason is because uh, Elizabeth Banks is hosting the current version of Pressure Luck and... This is going to sound sacrilege, but I think she's doing a better job at it than Peter is, than Peter did. Well, especially, especially the last couple of seasons. Hmm. And he's good on Wipeout. He's good on Hitman. Uh, Paranoia really wasn't that fond of. He was great on Pressure Luck. He was good everywhere else. Uh, he'll be on the low end of the great tier. I just wouldn't place him much higher than that. Burt Convy is next. Uh, Burt did Tattletales well. Um... Me, personally, I thought he was kind of miscast on Super Passer, but he did that well. I thought he was fantastic on Win, Lose, or Draw. So, Burt was able to get a lot out of the couples on Tattletales. He was able to get a lot out of the celebrities on Win, Lose, or Draw because he essentially helped produce it. And I think he is a top tier great host he is not a goat i don't think anybody would claim that bert's a goat because he always even in the 70s when he had that dynamic when mark goodson had a lot of cbs shows he always was in the shadow of bob barker and gene rayburn bert convy was like the third stringer and in some cases, when they did Game Show Host Week on Tattletales, he would also be the third trigger on his own show. Um, I'll say he's good. I don't think he's great, though. Ray Combs is next. Now, Ray made Family Feud his own thing. Um, he 
based it essentially off of um, his own comedy. And he did not want to be Richard. So very rarely did you see him kiss any of the ladies on the show. It was mainly a firm handshake. And it was quite enjoyable. And I'm trying to remember the, who the comedian was who act, who mentioned that on on the show. This was during a celebrity show. Uh, mentioned, I, I see why you don't kiss the girls on here because some of the girls be ugly. But he goes, I tell you what, you are going to kiss me just playing so big one which lasts for about five, ten seconds. And... I don't know what was more uncomfortable for Ray Combs, that kiss or him being in the ring at Survivor Series 93 and also having to do commentary on Bobby the Brain Heenan's last sh last pay-per-view on WWE. Hmm. I like Ray Combs. I think he's great. And also, he was probably the best thing about Family Challenge. Uh, we'll reorder, just want to let everybody know that we will reorder the tiers, um, and that's coming up later. Uh, Barker is next. I have made it abundantly clear over the course of, I want to say since 2017, 2018, Bob Barker would have been the best host of all time if he left. Uh, Price is Right after season 30. Those last five years, um, it almost felt like it was AI-driven. Like, if something weird happened, you'd be like, historic moment! And then just a lot of the false finishes, it, it felt like a really bad WWE, it felt like a really bad AEW match. I couldn't say false finishes with uh, WWE because usually it just ends in a solo Sokoa interference and then we're stuck on this three and a half year hellscape of a title run. Hopefully that ends at WrestleMania. Um, he's still a GOAT though. He's still a GOAT. I can't deny his uh, truth of consequences. Um... Price is right. He would fill in for Tattletales and do okay. Um, then there was the family game that he did for Chuck Barris. And I have his book. He doesn't speak too fondly about working for Barris. Uh, mainly because that was around the time where... We'll, we'll talk about Barris later. But we got David Ruprecht next. Um, David only... Mm. Excuse me. David Ruprecht only did one show, and that was Supermarket Sweep. And I thought he was really good at it. Um, fond memories from my childhood, watching him in, on Lifetime, and also when it was on PAX for three years. Do I think... He's not a GOAT. I thought he was really good. But he might also be a high, good, low, great. I'm going to put him in the good tier for right now, but that could be malleable. Then we got Pat Finn, and Pat Finn, I really enjoyed watching as a kid. I, it, It's kind of well known that I'm a big defender of Joker's Wild, the 1990 version. And I thought he took a format like that injected a little bit of personality into it and it worked well and then you see him on which i always thought was weird i thought he looked older on joker's wild 90 than he did on shop to you drop because i i didn't see the original run of joker 90 because apparently it was on channel 11 here and we only aired it for seven weeks so when I got to see it, it was mainly on the USA Network. And I kind of thought it was a newer show at the time. Because he looked older on Joker than he did on Shop to You Drop. Hell, he looks younger now than he did on Shop on Joker. I just don't get it. Um, 
So, really good genes there for Pat Finn. And also he did some good work on uh, Big Spin in California, the local lottery show. Also, he was their second longest host behind Jeff Edwards. Because Jeff did it for like 11 years because it was Chuck Woolery first then Jeff and then Larry Anderson Jack Gallagher and then Pat Finn I'm going to put him in good he's a good host for what he did and then we have Steve Harvey you can't say penis um, I'm going to make a lot of people who watch my videos angry And here's the reason. Family Feud does not exist today if not for Steve Harvey and his reactions. If it's not for Steve Harvey and the way that he brought his personality to Family Feud, the revivals that you're seeing right now don't exist. Because Celebrity Family Feud came first. And it was the power of Harvey and the power of that show that we got the revivals of Match Game, To Tell the Truth, Pressure Luck, Card Sharks, Password, all of that. It does not happen without Steve Harvey. Dead serious. And with that out of the way, He's not GOAT yet. Give it a few more years and we'll be there will be a conversation. He will be on the he will be in the conversation. Um, especially with you're gonna we have this new we're gonna have new fans of the genre coming. And it always seems to happen. Like they'll they will talk about the shows that they grew up with as a child, and Family Feud's going to be one of them. And they'll be like, Steve Harvey is fantastic, and a lot of us are going to agree, and some of us won't. But to those that say that he's going to be a GOAT, I he's closer to GOAT than he is a bad host. By a wide margin. Drew Carey is next, and once again, I am going to make people angry. Drew is good on The Price is Right. I don't care. He's not Bob. He's not trying to be Bob. He's more of an everyman. He's not erudite like Barker was. Like, he came from nothing. He was a comedian, and he's a blue-collar guy. Like... You know what? With the writer's strike and everything that happened, when it comes to these strikes, Drew, get up there. You're a goat human being, my friend. You are a goat human being. He did Who's Line fantastically. He was really good on Power of Ten. And I think he does a really damn good job on Price is Right. Despite what a lot of the uh, loyalists say. We'll, we'll put it that way. The loyalists. You know, the ones that will complain to Roger about everything. Roger, he didn't explain switcheroo correctly. <laughs> Annoying as all hell. Drew's great. And because for what he does with the unions and because of his work on Who's Line, he's up there. He's on the bottom end of goats, but he's up there. Louis Anderson. Um, when he hosted Feud, if you've watched the Eat Your Hollywood Story, he mentions this in a couple of books, um, the extortion scandal was prevalent. So, when we saw him on season three, it was... Mm, 
he did not want to be there. And honestly, he probably didn't want to be anywhere. He would have been happy to just crawl into a hole and not be seen for a while. And who could blame him? I thought he was fine on Family Feud. He made that show his own, like, in the back half of season one and season two. He's not Pat Bullard level. Um, he's just, eh, he's okay. Then we have Jeff. Jeff Edwards is on in this new tier maker and he is goat tier. Like he maybe second to Bill Cullen is the best 26 week or less host of all time. Like a lot of the shows that he did didn't last long unless it was Treasure Hunt, the new Treasure Hunt will last it for 4 years. The new chain reaction, which lasted when he took over for a little over five years. Big Spin, which was 11 years. Everything else lasted about a year or less. Play of the Percentages lasted, was, um, true story. I have part of the script written for that 26 weeks or less. I might finish it. And then he did Shoot for the Stars, which lasted eight months. And he did... What did he do? Uh, Hollywood's Talking was his first show. And then The Revival of Treasure Home, which lasted a year. Then he did Starcade, which was a year. Like, oh, Jackpot, which lasted 18 months. And then The Revival, which lasted six months before the syndicator went bankrupt. So he's up there. J.D. Roth. Um, loved him on Funhouse. Loved him on Zoo Venture. Um... Tried way too hard on Double Up. And then he created Endurance, Moolah Beach. So, yeah. Um, like, I wanted to do a top and bottom five kids game show host video. That might become a thing. Um, so... In general, he's a good host. I wouldn't consider him because he was good on fun. He was great on Funhouse. He was good on Zoo Venture. Everything else, I didn't really care for him that much. Maybe except for Endurance. Um, but compared to everybody else, he's good. Uh, Trebek, no, get up there. Trebek's a goat, no question about it. Um, high rollers. Uh, Jeopardy, Classic Concentration, one of the few hosts to do three shows at the same time. Now, and I mean that in three shows that aired at the same time. Um, if you take a look at some of the hosts that I that are already on here, um, Alex did three at one time, which was Jeopardy, Classic Concentration, to tell the truth. Jeff Edwards did it with uh, the new Chain Reaction, Jackpot, and Big Spin in 89. Um, Monty didn't do it. Bert did two. Yeah, Bert did two uh, with uh, Super Password and Win, Lose, or Draw. Um, and you'll see Bud Collier down there. We'll talk about him in a bit, but he, he also did three. He he was, I think, the first. Him and Bill Cullen, I don't know the dates, but I think it's either uh, Bill Cullen or Bud Collier was the first to do three. Three at the same time. Then we get to Alan Ludden, and I he's great on Password, great on SE College, a GE College Bowl. And there is another good show that he did. He did the Liars Club for two years, and he, I think he won the Emmy for Best Game Show, the Daytime Emmy for Best Game Shows for Liars Club. He might have won it for Password, I'm not quite so sure, but he won it for Liars Club. Uh, he also did a, 
the first uh, 26 Weeks of Love video that I did in Stumpers. Which is just a varying a password. But it was a good varying a password. It probably should have lasted a bit longer. Maybe another 13 weeks or so. Um, but that was like a Limbolan show. And it was just... Pff, they were kind of dumb Limbolan at the time. Um, but he's a goat. Uh, Bill Cullen is the goatiest of goats. Like, he is the host that we compare everybody to. Um, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Um, like, we compare other goats. Take a look at the rest of the goats that aren't Drew. We compared Bob to Bill, Monty to Bill. Barker to Bill, Jeff to Bill, Trebek to Bill, Lund got comparisons to Bill. And Lund honestly has the most direct comparisons to Bill Cullen because Bill subbed for Lund for Password Plus because Al Lund wasn't feeling well while Bill Cullen was doing Chain Reaction. And in some, a couple of those weeks when Bill was doing Chain Reaction, was doing uh, Password Plus, Jeff was doing uh, play the percentage at the time, but was also doing a couple of weeks of chain reaction while Bill was doing Password Plus. Game shows are weird. But Bill's top notch. And they said, now, now we got the Bills and Bobs, now we got another Bob and Bob going. Um... Bob Goen did uh, his first nationwide show was Perfect Match, which was one of the biggest newlywed game knockoffs you'll ever see. And I did a written video of that. I'm not going to go back and do a video on that because it doesn't qualify for 26 weeks or less, but that might show up in a rip-offs video. Um... He did Blackout, which has the dubious distinction of replacing Pyramid and being replaced by Pyramid. $25,000 Pyramid in the 80s. Uh, he did his, he had his biz, biggest success with Wheel of Fortune. He took over for Benershka when the show moved from NBC to CBS, and then that show moved back to NBC. And he did good there. He also did something like the Hollywood game, which lasted about a month. In CBS primetime, that's some that's another video that's coming up. Maybe if I have time. But yeah. Uh he's good. Um I won't call him great though, but he's good. Bud Collier. I think he's the first to do three. Because he did uh Beat the Clock when the show moved to ABC, but that was in its dying days. Um, he did, uh, Number Police, which was another poorly conceived show, and the big one, To Tell the Truth. And he's fantastic. He's also the radio voice for Superman. So, a lot of people might have thought George Reeves was the first person to portray Superman, but no, it was Bud Collier. And he did a fantastic job. Is he... I I kind of have to consider him GOAT status because he's the first host to do three at the same time. Or I think he's the first to do three at the same time. Bill might have done it first. Like, short live shows. Maybe Bill did him on the radio, but... TV-wise... I'm... Yeah, you're going up there, Bill. You're going up there, uh, bud. Because Bud was fantastic on Beat the Clock. I like they had other sub hosts for uh Bud Collier on Beat the Clock and also to tell the truth. Just never felt right without Bud Collier doing those two shows when they were on at the same time. So there you go. Then we have Greg Lee from Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. 
um, he came from the Mark Summers learning tree because he was part of Nickelodeon at that time and he did Total Panic before Where in the World's Come to San Diego. Um, when the show moved to Florida, he was part of the cast and crew. He was part of the crew. Um, he was audience warm-up for Double Dare. And when he got the job for Carmen San Diego, he got he did that for five years. And he also did a a clever show called Nitro. Which, not to be confused with WCW Nitro. Um, this Nitro was TV trivia mixed with goofy stunts. And it, it's it was an interesting show. Um, that would be one of the more interesting um, oddities in game show lore is Nitro. Because it was a show used to hype up channels that were coming to cable. Like Food Network, like CNN International, the Learning Channel when it came to other networks. So many new channels were coming and they used this show, they used Nitro to hype them up. It's interesting. Um, he's not, he's a good host. He's a high-end good host. I wouldn't put him great though. Dick Clark. Dick Clark is a goat. Because we've seen it time and time again. Pyramid does not run as well without uh, Dick Clark. Until recently with Strahan. Now I'm going to move myself. Take a look at the next three hosts. Yeah, I'll move myself down. Just to show that we have more room up there. Um, he did bloopers and practical jokes, did bandstand. He did the original U.S. version of Krypton Factor. And he did it well. Like, it was a short five-episode trial, you could say. But it worked. Much better than the disaster piece that was the kids' 1990 version. But you have everything that you want with Dick Clark. Um, his only knock is categories. But that's more fault on the production and the rules. It kind of confused him a bit. So that's more on Red Grundy than it is Dick Clark. Um, he did It Takes Two for the Family Channel. Which is another show for 26 Weeks or Less. That That's a good one to talk about because it is a revival of an old show. And it looked good with um, Dick Clark hosting. So, yeah. Now we get the unenviable task that is Ken Jennings. Ken is the current host of Jeopardy. It After what seemed like forever, like, he did, he was the first person to fill in for Alex when Alex was ill. He did a great job, he did a really good job then, and now, and then he had to deal with, like, a whole year of the trials with Mayim Bialik, Aaron Rodgers, Mehmet Oz, Mike, Mar Michael Richard, Mike Richards, Joe Buck, all of these guys. And then Mike Richards tried to weasel his way in. Then he got exposed for some unseemly things. And the PR nightmare ensued, so he was out. And then it became... what The original plan was Mike Richards was going to do the daytime version... And my Maim Bialik was going to do the nighttime episodes, which would have been the college championships. And there was rumors that they were going to move the Tournament of Champions to nighttime. Um, that's going to become different because then we have Jeopardy Masters. A Jeopardy Masters 
specials that are going to be coming up later this year. So Ken will be hosting that, and you'll have three people competing. I don't know who's going to be in it. It's going to be interesting. Um, when it comes to Ken as a host, people give him flack because he's not Alex. He has learned from Alex. He is just trying to be his own person. Do I think he's great? No. Do I think he's meh? No. He's good. There's nothing wrong with him. And then we have Wayne Brady. He's going to be put in the great tier. Um, he's fantastic on Let's Make a Deal. And I don't know if he did anything else. Pretty sure he did something else, but I'm forgetting. But he is fantastic on Let's Make a Deal. I don't put him in... He's like Steve Harvey. I don't put him in Goat Standards yet. Maybe in a couple more years he will have the discussion. Because he is Monty's true, true heir. And same way Steve Harvey was Richard Dawson and Ray Combs' is true heir to the throne. The way he plays off contestants, the way he plays off with Jonathan Mangum and Tiffany Coyne and Cat Gray, and the Money Fairy, and the Zonkaroo, and everything like that. It's perfect. Then we have Gene. Gene was fantastic on Match Game in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s. I st I want to know if they ever shot a pilot for 87. Because it had the red logo, and Gene was going to come back, but then Entertainment Tonight spoiled his age, and then Syndicators got cold feet. Because they were looking for youth, and Gene was not it. I think they were looking for people younger than, like, John McLaughlin or something. Anyway. He's GOAT. And that's all that needs to be said about it. Wink Martindale is another one who is GOAT status. Um, with his roles in Gambit, Tic Tac Doe, High Rollers, all of these other shows, they were made perfect because of him. Like, he, if you take a look at, if you look at the Mr. Game Show doll that was released in 87, it's pretty much based off of Wink Martindale. With his smile and his charm and the suits and everything like that. I think Wink could have been plugged into anything and he would have done it well. I have not seen Wink do a show badly. He was always good at his job. I think the closest could be to like bad was... Uh, how's your mother-in-law, but that's more along the lines of terrible format, terrible show, and being the best thing on said show. Because same thing with Barker in the family game. That was around that time where Newlywed Game was a hit, Danny Game was a hit, and ABC and the network just ordered everything for Chuck Bear off of Chuck Bears. If it was like the game game, you know, just these awful formats that had Bears' name to it and they sold. 
Go figure. Uh, you have Barris, and I know last year I put him in F tier. He's not F tier. Like, Gong Show is barely a game show, but very memorable. But the way he hosts it is just, eh, to me, like, I enjoy it, but I also know its flaws. Um, you have Don Blue for the 88 Revival. You have George Gray for the GSN version. And you have Tommy Maitland, which was the... That's another one of the revivals that you could thank Steve Harvey for in the success of Celebrity Family Feud. He he did all right. You know, Tommy Maitland, Mike Myers, that sort of thing. And, like, he's all right to me. Like, would he have worked on any other show? No. Like, if you take a look at him being himself on the Raw Raw show or... Any other interview, he he really didn't like being in front of the camera. But once Gong Show took off, and he got to do variety shows, he got to do the entertainment stuff that he always wanted to do. And then we have Bennett Surf's best friend, John Charles Daly. He's a great host. He was... One of the first game show hosts out there. Like Dennis James was there. Dennis James, Bill... No, I think John Charles Daly predates Bill. And Dennis, I think Dennis James was the first ever game show host, but D John Charles Daly was not far behind because What's My Line last debuted in 1950? January 1950? And he had that erudite style, and it worked for him. And he was able to do wonders with it. And that's what I find refreshing and enjoyable. Like, and he's also one of the few to do two shows at the same time, because he had What's My Line, and he also had It's News to Me, which was an interesting current events style quiz and that's another one that you might want to check out uh, not only for the news of the day but also kind of like the very first um is the panelists lying or not style show um so yeah take a look at that hmm. uh, wing martindale's on here twice i don't know why Ah, uh, Bowser. There's the one. Uh, Bowser sucked on Hollywood Square, Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. The story goes that Gene had to be dragged kicking and screaming uh, doing that show because he thought Bowser sucked. Bowser did all right on the Pop and Rocker game, which is... Quite kind of interesting to know because uh, Phil Hartman was the announcer for that. And I always thought that was interesting because Phil Hartman's one of the funniest guys of all time. Um, I don't know if he'd still be alive today if not for that. Um, but yeah. So it's all good stuff. But not Bowser. No, he sucked. He sucked on. He sucked as a panelist on Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. Um, never liked him on when he was a panelist on Super Password. He did okay with Password Plus uh, because he was playing a role in Bowser from Sha Na Na. If honestly, I think if he stayed in character when he was doing. Super Password. Like, I think that would have been fine. Like, he was more comfortable being Bowser 
than he was being on Magic Game Hollywood Square's hour. Um, he was more comfortable pop and rocker game because that's music. That's in his wheelhouse. Honestly, if that should, if go on YouTube and look up pop and rocker game, and the way that Bowser hosted that show compared to Magic Game Hollywood Square's hour is kind of night and day. He's still Pat Bowler dear, but it's fine. It's a good show. Uh, remote control, Ken Ober is good. Um, the thing with Ober is that his shtick worked on only one show, and that was remote control. It didn't work on any other show. It didn't work on that all-star basketball show that he did. It didn't work for Perfect Match on ESPN. It was okay for Make Me Laugh, but nowhere else. It was about 75% there on Smush. Um, and also when he was doing a Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn, he also helped produce that show. Yeah. Ken's good. I wouldn't call him great, though. Tom Kennedy is a guy who I would consider great. Tom Kennedy did a lot of shows well. Some of them short-lived. But he wanted to know the nuance of every game. And it worked. So, yeah. Tom Kennedy can also command a room, but he could also allow it to go into total chaos. The French for French incident is proof of that. And then, anywhere he went, it was just fun. Like, name that tune, few, um, body language, uh, wordplay, all those shows. So yeah, he's a great host. I wouldn't put him in goat tier, though. Peter Marshall is another great host. He is not a goat, though. Peter Marshall did one show well, and that was fantastically, and that was Hollywood Squares. The rest was he was playing Peter Marshall on Hollywood Squares, like with All Star Blitz. Um, Yahtzee, he produced, and it stunk where he tried to play Gene Rayburn. Then there was Fantasy, where he was just trying to exist. And then you have the Real to Real Picture Show, which was a thing that was on TV. I don't get why show why producers thought hey this guy was successful in the 60s and the 70s it would work in the 90s and no wonder the uh, pr producers of that show got a 200 episode order from PAX and only delivered 30 episodes before the show went bankrupt and none of the contestants got their prizes go figure Maim Bialik is next Maim, out of the Jeopardy sub-hosts of that time, during that gauntlet, uh, top five, would have been my first choice. And personally, wouldn't have been my second choice, because my second choice would be Joe Buck. Which, a little sidetrack here. Somebody give Joe Buck a game show. He would do fantastic on that show. He would do fantastically. Give him a sports game show. You know what? Bring back Two Minute Drill on ESPN. Since he's now working for ESPN because he's doing Monday Night Football with Troy Aikman. If Tony Reale doesn't want to do that show, Joe Buck is my second choice. Dead stop. Somebody give Joe Buck a game show. As for me, when it comes to Mayim Bialik, eh. 
Truth be told about Bialik, um, I think she's fine. But I think, like, here's my idea for my Jeopardy, she kind of works, but do kind of doesn't. If you reboot Win Ben Stein's Money, have Mayim be the host slash person going up gets putting up $10,000 of her own money. This could be syndicated. Get a young comedian to pair up, pair up with her who's also a little bit crass, a little bit smart. And I think she could hold her own. Meredith Vieira is next, and if you had asked me this question before twenty before twenty five words or less existed, it would be this because she was okay for the first couple of years of Millionaire, but then I just couldn't. I was just done with her. Now she's this because I love her on twenty six. On 25 words or less. Like, she's got the personality. And you really saw that personality in the first season when she was there with the celebrities in the studio. Um, and then COVID hit and we all know what happened. Um, but now the new season is filming in a few weeks at the time I'm taping this. And I think she's back in studio for the first time in a long time. Um, so she'll be able to bounce off of all the celebrity bounce off the celebrities and everything like that. So it should be good. Should be good. Uh, Dawson is great for Family Feud. Um, he is disqualified from GOAT status. And the reason being is because he was a, he was a complete fuck behind the scenes. Like, he thought his shit didn't stink, and he was just insufferable backstage. Like, sure, a lot of the hosts that are on this list could have been aggravating behind the scenes, but nobody was at the level of prima donna that Richard Dawson was. So because of that, he is disqualified from GOAT status. Uh, he was great on Match Game as a panelist. Great on feud. Uh, honestly, I think his best role was his Damon Killian on The Running Man. That movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, hmm. So, yeah. That's done. And next is Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, Jeff is another good host. Um, if you take a look, fifth grader doesn't work as well with somebody else. Even in other countries. Like, I've seen the uh, UK version with Noel Edmonds and also Ant and Deck. It, it was okay. It didn't work. Canada tried it with Colin Mockery. That didn't work. Because here's the thing about the UK and the Canada hosts. We have been known to see Anton Deck, Noel Edmonds, and Colin Mockery play smart. We've seen them play smart before. We have never seen Jeff Foxworthy play smart a day in his life. We always knew him as that redneck guy. That you might be a redneck if. And it fits to fifth grader, and he took to it like a duck to water. And he was also able to build drama with it. And Foxworthy did well also with um, the American Bible Challenge. So, and that's another interesting story as well with the American Bible Challenge. Like, it had three tournaments on GSN and got Bafo ratings. I have no idea why that didn't come back for a fourth season. So, take that for what you will. And around that time, another person was coming up, and that is Howie Mandel. Howie has done Deal or No Deal. 
He is the current... He's one of the current panelists for America's Got Talent. Um, you could also see him on Funny You Should Ask. Like, it's between... You normally see it... He was normally in the Louis chair on that show when Louis couldn't make it. Either if he was taping baskets at the time or he wasn't in California. Um, can't say too much bad about Howie. Although I will say if he is part of Deal or No Deal Island, he's like the banker in the yacht that I will be furious. Like, somebody as talented as he is is wasted in an awful project like that. Um, he's another one for the good tier. Then you have John O'Hurley. And John did the 2000 to 2002 version to Tell the Truth, and he did that well. Then you had him do a couple of specials for Fox, like the... There's a celebrity spelling bee show that he did. Then he, then he got Family Feud in 2006. He replaced Richard Karn. And then he kind of fell off the earth. Like he was busy with spam a lot. And if anybody wants to bring up Seinfeld, he's like, oh yeah, I did Seinfeld. Jay Peterman over here. Um, he's another one in the good tier. He's not a goat or anything like that. Pat Sajak is also great. Um, the reason I don't have him in GOAT status is because he only really ever did one show. But he has done it fantastically. And you could tell he has made Wheel of Fortune his own. Because if you take a look at 1989, you know, the daytime version when he left, like, it was gone after two and a half years. With Rolf... And with uh, good tier guy uh, Bob Goen. I just don't think. Seacrest is going to have a tough time replacing him uh, in September. I, will he be able to do a good job? I think so. But it just all depends on how everything lines up. Like, he could falter. Or he could be pretty good, like what Graham Norton's doing right now in Wheel UK. But well, that show, that show's wrapped up. Uh, I don't know if it's going to come back for season two now. Same thing with uh, Jeopardy uh, in daytime. All depends. Um, he's a good host. He's a great host, but I'm not ready to throw him in goats. Jim Perry. Best damn... He is a god in Canada, with definition. He hosted Card Sharks here. He hosted Sale of the Century here. There's a few other shows that Jim Perry did in Canada. Like, he lived... In, he was born in New Jersey. He found work in Canada, and he's a Canadian institution. And who can fault him for that? And there's a great little... In Search of Canada's game shows was one of the best done documentary series when it comes to game shows that aired on Game TV in Canada and got two seasons of it. I don't think they have any material for season three, if there is going to be one. But they dedicated ten minutes of an episode to Jim Perry. And what he did, especially with definition, and he, it, it was, he, there was nothing he couldn't do. Like, he could dance, he could host well, he could even sing. He was a bit of a crooner. If you take a look at the Miss Canada pageants, he hosted those and he sang to the winner. He was the Burt Parks of Canada. He might have been better than Burt Parks. So, 
Ascend into Game Show Valhalla. Chuck Woolery. Um, I do not disqualify him because of how awful a human being he is. I can't really pin that cat game show on him because he was probably contractually obligated to do that. Or he was desperate enough that he needed the paycheck. Either way, eh. I can't say he's the best host of Wheel of Fortune because Pat did it better than he did. Um, Love Connection, he made his own. Like, well, he started hosting the 70s. His best work was in the 80s with Love Connection and Scrabble. And he did a good job of lingo and greed. But I mainly remember him for Love Connection and Scrabble. And he's also one of the few hosts that have done three at the same time. He did Love Connection Scrabble, and he was the first host of the Big Spin, which lasted about three weeks. He only did three weeks of Big Spin for, I guess, scheduling conflicts, so Jeff Edwards got so Jeff Edwards came and replaced him. But you know what? He's a great host. And then we have Binford Feud himself, Richard Garn. Your strike for his blood! You're gonna get those points! You're gonna triple the points! Like, Karn did Feud from 2002 to 2006. He replaced Louie. He also did Bingo America for Season 2. Patrick Duffy for... Like... GSN did some star fuckery in when they rebranded. And it's Patrick Duffy is one of the most baffling uh, host selections of all time, in my opinion. Like, where did you dig him up? What what did his agent have on him that? force his hand to do that show like there is a great faux closed caption video of bingo of america during this one promo and <laughs> it's the most hilarious thing go check it out if you can find it um richard carlos eh, he was okay he's not garbage but he's solidly in meh uh, Jim Lang is next, and uh, I don't know. I just can't get there with Jim. Like, I know he did a good job with the dating game, Bullseye, Million Dollar Chance of a Lifetime. Like, he was the best thing about Bullseye, but that was not a good show at all. Um, the last show he did was Triple Threat. I just don't know with Jim Lang. Give him the benefit of the doubt, though. He's a good host. Then we have Mark Summers. Mark is a great host. I don't think Double Dare becomes as big as it is without him. I also don't think it becomes as successful without him. There are other shows that didn't do too well. Couch Potatoes only lasts less than 26 weeks. That's a show I want to do for 26 weeks or less. Um, he produced Pick Your Brain, which was fine. He did what, what Would You Do, which was good. Trivia Unwrapped, History IQ. He was part of the Double Dare reboot, which was fantastic. It's a shame that only got two seasons. Um, he's got an off-Broadway show right now, which is really, really good. And I'm gonna put him up here. Like, you can get him to host Scrabble. Like, they're rebooting Scrabble. If, it, if, if CW, when it reboots Scrabble, Um, if, if it's anything like the 80s version with Chuck, 
Mark should be called. Because he did it. He did that show for a few episodes because Chuck was playing. And Chuck Woolery did a great job. And Mark Summers did a good job. I still think he could do a great job. So, yeah, he's great. He's not a go. He's probably the best kids game show host of all time. But I can't put him in goats. I just don't have it in me to put him in goats. And then you have... Is that Vanna? Like, the... The photo is chopped off. Um, but that's kind of Tear Maker's programming. Like, I kind of wish I had this program where you can alter the photo where you could pan up. And where it doesn't just chop everything up from, like, top to bottom. Um... Vanna was it put in a rough spot because she hosted Wheel of Fortune for three weeks because Pat had like Pat had an intestinal blockage a day before they were supposed to start taping. So Pat was out and Vanna had to step in. And there are some moments on that show where mm, she was really uncomfortable up there. And, but she braved through it and she was okay, I guess. Um, she was okay. I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt though. Because we already have the one in the garbage tier, and that's John Bauman. That was the obvious one. Because I can't really call anybody else awful. So now let's organize these guys. Organize everything. Well, Bauman's easy. He's on his own. So the one that's... The one that's on... This, like, the closest to where Goats, where, where the title is, up top, is number one. So, let's organize Mitt here, Ben, Louis, Chuck, Maim, Karn, and Vanna. I'll put... Go. Karn. Chuck. Maim, Ben Bailey. Louie and then Vanna. And then we have the good tier. Um, we'll go Jim Lang, Convy, uh, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, Jim Lang, best of the good tier. Now it comes the best of the great tier. Here's where it gets tough. Best of the great tier. We have... Steve Harvey, the man who kind of saved the genre in the 2010s. We have... The OG in John Charles Daly, Tom Kennedy, Mark Summers, Pat Sajak. Well, seeing as how a lot of people in the comments section when I make this are going to be angry at me, let's do it. Let's go whole hog. We'll go Steve, then Wayne, then Kennedy. Then Summers, then Daly, then Dawson, Sajak, Combs, Marshall, Tamark, and Woolery. All right. The goat tier. I said Drew was on the low end. We know. 
Cullen's on the high end. Go Alex. Go Jim Perry. Gene. Now we're just splitting hairs. Yeah, that's it. Bill is number one, far and away. Drew is goat periphery, but goat human being. So yeah, this is perfect. In my opinion, I like this. I like this tier maker. So I'm just gonna go. I'm not going to go well in depth because here's the recap. We have Bill Cullen up top. Then we have Alex, Jim Perry, Rayburn, Dick Clark, Bob Eubanks, Al Lund, Bob Barker, Jeff Edwards, Money Hall, Bud Collier for being the first to do three. Three at the same time. Wink Martindale and then Drew Carey for just being a great human being, just being a goat human being. Um, and then greats, Steve Harvey... For, you know what? For saving the genre. There it is. Perfect. So... I would put Wayne top of the great tier, and then we have Tom Kennedy, Mark Summers, John Charles Daly, Dawson, Sajak, Combs, Marshall, Tamark, and Woolery. And then for the good tier, we have Jim Lang, Burt Convey, Ruprecht, Finn, J.D. Roth, Bob Goen, Greg Lee, Meredith Vieira, Jeff Foxworthy, Ken Jennings, uh, John O'Hurley, and Howie Mandel. How, wait, I have Howie Mandel on the low end of the tier? That middle tier is tough. And then the mid tier, which is Richard Karn, Chuck Barris, Mayim Bialik, Ben Bailey, Louis Anderson, and Vanna White. And then we have Bauman in the Pat Bullard tier. So there you have it. That is the tier maker. So what do you guys think about the tier maker? Uh, tell me how wrong I am in the comment section below. And tell me how much of an idiot I am for putting Steve Harvey in the GOAT tier. I don't care. It's content. It's fun. And I'm right. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, I'll have a link to this tier maker in the description so you could do your own. Uh, join us on the Discord where you can have, so you can show off what your um, opinions are when you do the tier maker. And also, if you want to see videos like this a day early and become a Patreon backer, like these wonderful people right up here, these guys, uh, become a Patreon backer at patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo. I am Cindy Seidelman, and let's play the feud. Bye, everybody. See you next time.